Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Dr. Amna Hussein, board certified pediatrician, board certified lactation consultant, and mom. One of our past popular videos was on baby items you don't need. I'm gonna link it right here, but guess what? Drum roll. We're actually gonna be doing a part two. So stay tuned because we're gonna be talking about more items that you don't need. So for everyone listening, by any means, if you purchase one of these items, I will let you know if it's like a eh, okay to have, or you should absolutely not have this for safety standards. And most of these items are things that I don't think you need that I would be telling one of my patients across from me in the clinic room. So I'm just trying to have a one-on-one -on -one candid talk with you. By no means is this meant to attack you or prove to you that if you bought one of these items and it's not technically unsafe, that you were wrong to do so. So first off, let's start off with one of those formula mixers. Commonly, one device is known as Baby Brezza. And I personally am not a big fan of these because essentially there have been many reports of them mixing unevenly. So the way a Baby Brezza works is almost like how I would describe a Keurig. So you can put the formula in, you put the water in, and it really creates the formula for you in a nice, frothy, warm manner that pours into the bottle for the baby. And it does all that for you. I call it, you know, the fancy baby formula mixer. Sometimes the formula can actually clump and you create hypocaloric formula. And then sometimes you put it in and it might use that old formula from the last time and end up creating a hypercaloric formula. Either way, the bigger risk here is potentially feeding your baby a less caloric formula and they're not gaining optimal weight. Usually, if a parent buys this, I understand the convenience factor behind it. I usually let them know about this ahead of time and many times parents are aware of it and they'll let me know like, we understand, we clean it after every use, this is something that works for us, we only use it for one bottle perhaps, etc. This is one of those things that if a parent wants to buy it, I go over with them what my concerns are and it's important for me to let them know that or if they choose to put it on the registry afterward, for example, that's totally up to them. But this is something that I don't think you necessarily need. The second item, amber teething necklaces. Please don't buy your child an amber teething necklace. So for those of you who might be new to parenting or have no idea what the controversy is with an amber teething necklace or are furiously Googling it right now to find out what they do, amber teething necklaces claim to contain succinic acid when it comes at contact with the skin that it helps to release anti-inflammatory properties that help relieve teething pain. The big risk here is there is strangulation risk. Whether you put it on your child when they're asleep or you put it on your child when they're awake, I don't care. It's a strangulation risk. It's not necessary. The claims are false. They do not release any kind of anti-inflammatory properties. They're not necessary. You should not put one on your child. Please, they are not safe. All right, the third one, bumpers. So many parents, no matter how much they practice safe sleep, they still choose to invest in bumpers when their child gets older. They worry about their arms and their legs getting caught in it and they fall into the trap of breathable bumpers. Listen, I understand, but this is why a video baby monitor can make a huge difference because you will hear your child if they get stuck, if they begin crying and you are able to wiggle, maneuver them and get them free. But actually bumpers can increase the risk of them getting stuck, increase the risk of them potentially suffocating, increase the risk of potentially strangulating, especially if they get one of the bumper ribbons free that wrap around the crib and it could potentially get around their neck. So essentially bumpers, I would say leave them off the registry, don't put them on, they're not safe. Lastly, sticking with the crib, a mobile. I know, I know mobiles look so cute and I know that once upon a time we used to have one in our crib when we were babies, but mobiles are not safe. They as well should not be in the crib you want. A simple crib with a mattress and a flat sheet. You don't need to have a mobile there. If you choose to have a mobile, put it on your registry while the baby might be sleeping in a bassinet in your room and the mobile is just decorating the crib, I have no problem with that. But when you actually move the baby into the crib to sleep, please make sure you take the mobile off. All right, I hope that was helpful. This one was a lot shorter than the last one. If you have more items and you have questions about if you should put them on your registry, drop them in the comments below. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. See you next week. Bye.